Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome back to Bookie Monsters. My name is PK. This is Bookie Monsters. It is Wednesday, December the 7th, and we are here to look at the new releases that are being set into the wild this week. And on Wednesdays, we look at romance. I hope you are having a good day if you're watching it now. Thank you very much. If you're watching it later when I repost this, thank you for watching it then. Uh, if you do like what you're seeing, please hit the like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, because when we do sprints, you never know, they could happen early, they could happen spontaneous. Just because we are wild and crazy readers like that. Uh, quick announcements. Wednesdays, there are no sprints tonight. My next sprints are tomorrow evening at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. Uh, sometimes I start a little early on those if the traffic goes in my favor when I'm driving home from work. Uh, and then the next sprints after that will be Saturday afternoon. Uh, tomorrow's morning show, we'll be looking at fantasy and science fiction. Let us jump in. This one's been all over the place. Let's see. Oh, Ellie Hazelwood, sure. Paranormal, werewolves and shifters romance. I'm out. But there is a large population that does like this kind of romance and there is a book for everybody. A dangerous alliance between a vampire bride and an alpha werewolf becomes a love deep enough to sink your teeth into. Misery Lark, yeah, her parents loved her, the only daughter of the most powerful vampire councilman of the Southwest, is an outcast. Again. Her days of living in anonymity among the humans are over. She has been called upon to uphold a historic peacekeeping alliance between the vampires and their mortal enemies, the wares, and she sees little choice but to surrender herself in the exchange again. Wares are ruthless and unpredictable, and their alpha, Low Moreland, is no exception. He rules his pack with absolute authority, but not without justice, and, unlike the Vampire Council, not without feeling. It's clear from the way he tracks Misery's every movement that he doesn't trust her. If only he knew how right he was. Because Misery has her own reasons to, do, to agree to this marriage of convenience, reasons that have nothing to do with politics or alliances, and everything to do with the only thing she's ever cared about. And she's willing to do whatever it takes to get back, to, to get back what's hers, even if it means a life alone in wear territory, alone with Wolf. I bet he's hot, too. Tessa Bailey, big name in romance lately. This comes out on the 13th. This is not this week. To Woo and to Wed, fifth in the Regency Vows series by Martha Waters. The final installment. Follows the heir to a dukedom and a young widow, once very much in love, as they reunite years later to fake an engagement for the benefit of her sister. Wes, the Marquess of Weston, and Sophie, Lady Fitzwilliam Bridewell, have lately been spending a considerable amount of time together. But West and Sylvie are not new acquaintances. In fact, years ago, they had once been nearly engaged until West's almost fatal curricle accident and his meddling father threw them off course. Now recently widowed, Sophie has put aside all thoughts of romance, but when her widowed sister, Alexandra, mentions a fondness for an earl, Sophie realizes that she may be holding her sister back. Alexander won't move forward with an engagement until Sophie, too, settles down again, and so Sophie approaches West with a plan. They will announce their engagement and break things off once Alexandra is happily married. It'll be simple. After all, it's not like she's going to fall for West a second time, not when Sophie has sworn not to risk her heart again. Not again. Good morning, Kim. How are you? Hi, Annalise. Happy Wednesday all. 
Storm Reads did a shout out for you and some other channels. Was, I saw that and I thanked her. I think that is so wonderful. What a good friend. It helps people out for sure. Because we all just watch. I mean, we do this because we like watching other booktubers out there. That's how I started. Of course, I've only been doing it since July. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. And yes, I need a haircut. When Grumpy Met Sunshine by Charlotte Stein. A steamy, opposites attract romance with undeniable chemistry between a grumpy retired footballer and his fabulous and very sunshiny ghostwriter. When grumpy ex-footballer Alfie Harding gets badgered into selling his memoirs, he knows he's never going to be able to write them. He hates revealing a single thing about himself, is allergic to most emotions, and can't imagine doing a good job of putting pen to paper. And so in walks Kirby, cheery, cute-as-heck ghostwriter Mabel Williker, who knows just how to sunshine and sass her way into getting every little detail out of Affie, Alfie. They banter and bicker their way to writing his life story, both of them sure they'll never be anything other than at odds. But after the business arrangement is mistaken for a budding romance, the pair have to pretend to be an item for a public who's ravenous for more of this Cinderella story. Or at least it feels like it's pretend until each slow step in their fake relationship sparks a heat neither can control. Now they just have to decide, is this sizzling chemistry just for show? Or is something so real it might just give them a fairy tale ending? The Reason I Married Him by Megan Quinn. I like that cover. It's got some nice colors there. Oh, thank you very much. He proposed and I said yes. Normally a jovial occasion for a couple in love, but this proposal has a very different feel. Because the man that I'll be calling my husband flew into town with one thing on his mind, to make my life a living nightmare. So why did I say yes? Well, because we both need something from each other. Namely, I want the farmland he currently owns, and he needs a wife in order to inherit his family cabin in his grandfather's will. So as he so eloquently put it, my hand for his land. At first, I thought the idea was nuts. Who really gets married out of convenience? Apparently, I do. And now we have to sell our relationship to the town, meaning we're holding hands. He's pinching my cheeks, upper and lower. We're even forced to share the one-bedroom guest house on the farm where his monstrous body, monstrous body, is taking up a large percentage of the bed. But we're so persuasive about our farce that now I'm starting to think he actually might like me, especially when he grabs me by the wrist and teases the shell of my ear as he whispers, Mine. Yeah. That's got some icky vibes there, though. It could be just a really nice read, but the descriptions are just bleh. Icky words. <laughs> Girls with Bad Reputations by Zeo Axelrod. Second in the Lilies series. All her life, Kayla heard the same refrain, don't be so loud, don't act so wild, don't take up so much space. Now she's the beating heart of an up-and-coming rock band, and the whole world is going to know her name. Once upon a time, the pressure to be the perfect daughter nearly broke Kayla Whitman. Desperate to find an outlet away from her controlling mother, she picked up a pair of drumsticks, forever altering the rhythm of her life. Since then, she's been determined to make her own way, finding her home with her bandmates, even as she fights to keep her past and her present firmly separate. Things are simple enough when the Lilies were playing local gigs at dive bars, but now they're on their first official tour, and all Kayla can see are warning signs. Desperate to escape the worry churning inside her, Kayla finds solace in quiet tour bus driver Ty Baldwin, and discovers in him a kindred spirit like no one she's ever met before. 
Their connection is immediate and intense, but when increasing scrutiny from the press threatens to destroy Ty's newfound peace and Kayla's carefully guarded secrets, Kayla's forced to make an impossible choice. Pursue her dream and risk destroying everyone around her, or give in and lose the chance of ever becoming the person she's always known she could be. Why is it an either or? The Last Days of Lila Goodluck by Kylie Scott. Be quiet and listen. He's cheating on you. The name of your soulmate is Alistair George Arthur Lennox. Uh, you will be passed over for the promotion. The winning numbers are 5, 8, 12, 24, 39, and 43. And I'm very sorry to tell you this, but you will die next Sunday. When Lila Goodluck saves the life of Goodwitch Willow as they're crossing a busy L.A. street, the last thing she expects is five unwanted predictions as a reward. Who gives someone the winning lotto numbers, then tells them they've only got a week to live? And who believes in that nonsense anyway? But when the first three predictions come true within 24 hours, Lila's disbelief turns to mild panic. She's further horrified when she nearly runs a car off the road that belongs to Alistair Lennox, who just happens to be the illegitimate son of the British king. While Alistair is intrigued by her preposterous story, Lila is adamant about resisting the heat between her and the Playboy Prince. If she denies he's her soulmate, then the last prediction can't come true, right? As the days count down, they become maybe friends, and then maybe more. But between the relentless paparazzi and some disapproving royals, finding time for love isn't easy, especially when her days may be numbered. A Love Song for Ricky Wild by Tia Williams. Leap years are a strange, enchanted time. There is one this year. And for some, even a single February can be life changing. Ricky Wild has many talents, but being wild isn't one of them. As the impulsive, artistic daughter of a powerful Atlanta dynasty, she's the opposite of her famous socialite sisters. Where they're long stemmed roses, she's a dandelion, an adorable bloom that's actually a weed born to float whenever the, wherever the wind blows in her bones ricky knows that somewhere a different more exciting life awaits her when regal nonagenarian ms della invites her to rent the bottom floor of her harlem brownstone ricky jumps at the stand at the chance for a fresh beginning she leaves behind her family wealth and chaotic romantic decisions to realize her dream of opening a flower shop and just beneath the surface surface of her new neighborhood, the music, stories, and dazzling drama of the Harlem Renaissance still simmers. One evening in February, as the heady, curiously off-season scent, off scent of night-blooming jasmine fills the air, Ricky encounters a handsome, deeply mysterious stranger who knocks her world off balance in the most unexpected way. Set against the backdrop of mod modern Harlem and Renaissance glamour, this book is a swoon-worthy love story of two passionate artists drawn to the magic, romance, and opportunity of New York, and whose lives are uniquely and irreversibly linked. The Wrath by Gina Showalter. These are my abs. <laughs> why is he clutching his shirt like that uh fourth of the rise of the warlords gina showalter is a name let's double check this is okay it's a new one for centuries, Rathbom, the only king of agonies, has existed for one purpose, recovering the enchanted bones of his slain wife to bring her back to life. He's never been closer to success, but a new enemy has arisen. A band of deadly war gods who have 30 days to destroy her or suffer the consequences. With time running out, Rathborn hires a maddening harpy oracle, unaware she has an agenda of her own. Nika the Unwanted is a fierce warrior on a mission. Stop Rathbone and the gods. She's seen the future if either is victorious and it's horrifying. She'll do whatever proves necessary to forge a new path, even seduce the ruthless royal from his purpose. What she can't predict, 
how the intense male will shatter her hard-won defenses along the way. As Rathbone battles unexpected betrayals, cutting foes, and the wild temptress he craves with every fiber of his being, he knows he must choose, hold on to a cold dream, or embrace a new flame. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. Hopefully we can end on a nicer note. That looks very fantasy. We're going to save that till tomorrow. Something like Love, Chicago Grizzlies, book number three by Piper Rain. I want to. I can't. I've been friends with Cooper Rice from the moment we met. He was just a, as famous a decade ago on our college campus as he is now being the star quarterback for the Chicago Grizzlies. But he's not only talented on the field, he's also the gorgeous football star women fawn over, posing in underwear and razor ads. Here's a secret those women don't know. Cooper Rice isn't a playboy. He's the kind of man who wants to settle down with a family. He's content ordering pizza and massaging my feet after my long shift as an emergency room doctor. He listens to me as if he's as invested as I am in my patients. He has never let me down. This is exactly why I refuse to live without Cooper in my life. Eight years ago, I made him promise me that we'd never cross that line. And just... Like I do Cooper Wood, he's held to that promise. Despite our best efforts, our relationship is evolving, shifting into new territory, and I find myself unsure if I want Cooper to keep that promise. Ignoring the obvious could tear us apart, but so could giving in, meaning there's a chance I'll lose Cooper forever, no matter what decision I make. The Anti-Hero by Tijin. 564 pages. Romance doesn't need to be that long. Let's double check the date though. Alright. I shouldn't have agreed to this. What was I thinking? Appearing on a local news show just because something happened to me? I live mostly in isolation on purpose. But here I am. I'm so nervous that I needed the makeup chair twice. And then I walked past his room. He's a giant. No softness, all muscle. And a rich beard that made me want to rub myself all over it. He made me see stars literally because the second time I saw him, I tripped. Or I would have, but he caught me and the cameras were rolling. Soon that clip will be trending because he wasn't just another guest on the show. He's Brett Brodeau, Brodeau the King's newest football star. We couldn't be more opposite. The only special thing about me is the reason I was on the show. Brett, the Super Bowl champion, and me, the survivor who helped bring down the infamous Midwest Butcher. Brett might not think he's anyone's hero, but he's about to become mine. Okay. Well, it is a standalone. Oof. Is it just me, or is it just kind of... These are all very heavy. Do we have any beautiful dresses? Show me a beautiful dress romance. Or don't they do those anymore? And, you know, a shirt being ripped off while she's clinging in her beautiful dress. I'm not seeing any here. How sad. How sad. Fine. Give it a chance. All right, let's see what this one. That one's kind of pretty. We'll double check the date. Okay, close enough. 
Love Between the Lines by Judith Keem. Keem? Keem? Second in the Lilac Lake Inn series. That is a really pretty cover. Keeping a Family Promise can be the beginning of a whole new life for everyone in town. Taylor Guilford is more than happy to accept her grandmother's gift of a cottage on the Lilac Lake Inn's property to be shared with her two sisters, Danny and Whitney. The youngest, she's always felt left out when the sisters got together. Living at Lilac Lake will give her a chance to know them better. More than that, it might help the writer's block she's been experiencing and help her recover from a stinging critique by her publisher's new editor, Tom Thompson C. Walker. After a few successful books in her fantasy series, Taylor can't allow her career to end without fighting back. As she struggles, she learns a lot about herself and realizes that reading between the lines can bring a lot of happiness. Another of this author's blah, blah, blah. Kindle Unlimited. That came out in November. What the hey? Let's go over here instead. These are young adult ones. Even If It Breaks Your Heart by Aaron Hahn. The only thing keeping 19-year-old Case Michaels together after the death of his best friend Walker is a list Walker left behind of things he wants Case to accomplish in his absence. So far, though, Case hasn't even been able to continue riding bulls in the rodeo circuit, something he's done his entire life, mocking at the thought of competing without Walker by his side. But the list, Case is determined to follow it to the letter, and he follows it all the way to Winnie Sutton. 18-year-old Winnie Sutton just wants to keep her family together. She graduated high school early to work long shifts at the Michaels family ranch so she could support her younger siblings and a father who's more than happy to let Winnie fill the responsible parent role. If she sometimes sneaks out to ride the horses herself and forget about life for a while, well, that's no one else's business, until the day she crashes headfirst into Case Michaels. Case sees her riding skills and immediately ropes her into competing for the ranch and becoming his friend. Winnie and Case couldn't be more different, but Case can't help but be inspired by Winnie's badly hidden passion for the riding and competition. And there's something about Case that makes Winnie want to try grasping onto a dream for herself, whether that's a shot at a rodeo trophy, the annoyingly handsome rancher's son who won't leave her alone, or maybe both. All right. Well, that's all we have time for today. We got through a lot. Nice cover. Yes. All right, guys. Well, we will be uh, looking at fantasy and science fiction tomorrow morning. And then on Friday, we usually do follow-up stuff, usually a lot of uh, uh, cozy mysteries, um, and because there's always a lot of those, and just whatever else catches our eye. Yes. Yes. That would be nice. So again, no sprints tonight. Uh, sprints tomorrow night at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. They'll go for two and a half hours. Bring your own book work on a project if you want to or just close your eyes after a, a tough day uh, that is time for you and do as you wish in the meantime i hope you are having a good day take care of yourself please read good books if you're not reading a book that you like it's okay to set it aside it's just not the right time there's lots of books out there as we are looking at and as the batter says here don't be a bookworm be a bookie monster um, um, um. Have a good day. God bless.